Hi everyone, welcome back. This video is a continuation of our discussion about metaheuristic algorithms for optimization. And in the last video, we looked at a real world use case of steel strength uh, optimization using simulated annealing. And we'll do exactly that in the next video using PSO. But for now, let's go ahead and understand what particle swarm optimization is. And again, if you wanna be notified of these videos as they're coming, as they come along, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. And while you're there, hit the thanks button if you are feeling generous. Okay, let's jump in to understand what it is, quick background, and then we'll jump to the code and I promise we'll understand more once we get to the code. First of all, particle swarm optimization, it's, a, uh, it's, it's inspired by the behavior of flocks like birds and schools of fish. Why are they going all in this direction and how are they finding food, for example? then it comes down to creating a population of particles or fish, birds, and they represent candidate solution, each of this. And they move through this optimization space. And again, think of this as you and a whole bunch of your buddies are trying to find the best restaurant or the best place to eat for dinner. And you individually are part of a flock, but then you have your own conscience. You're doing your own search based on your conscience and you're like, hey, I found the best optimal food for us to uh, you know, eat tonight. But then you text your friends and then you get like other messages. You're like, yeah, mine is better than this guy's. But then you get some someone else texting with something else. They're like, wow, this got better rating. This got better food and diverse menu. Okay, I like your solution better, right? So there is a conscious component, which is my own component. And there is a global component, which is, okay, how is everyone else doing? So these are the two things that are part of uh, the particles form optimization. And in addition to that, there is a component called uh, velocity, with uh, meaning how fast is someone traveling, finding the solution. You may have this lazy friend, we all have those, who is not finding anything. It was like, just, okay, I found this thing. And it's, I mean, you're like, okay, that's a crappy place, dude. You know, so we're not gonna go there. So these are uh, so that 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 person is not moving at fast velocity, right? So this is what we mean by velocity. How fast can you find, you know, move to the next solution and so on. So I think I summarized this slide, but we'll uh, we'll we'll. Uh, understand more once we get to the code part of it. So it's suitable for solving nonlinear dynamic uh, optimization problems like machine learning, signal processing, control systems, and so on. Again, I'll let you figure out what exactly the problem is, but I'm trying to make sure you understand exactly what PSO is. Okay, with this information, let's jump into the code, and there is a lot more to explain once we get there. I have the same text up here. I'm gonna share the file with you as usual, the code, so you don't have to worry about writing down anything. So as usual, let's define an object. <coughs> I'm sorry. As usual, let's define an objective function. And this is the same objective function we used two videos ago as part of our simulated annealing. The solution is supposed to be four, five, and minus six, right? I mean, that's the solution right there. And uh, we are defining in this case, uh, bounds as minus 10 for each of these x's and maximum as 10 uh, each of these x's for x y and z the minimum is minus 10 maximum is 10 this is the bound within which the solution will lie and how many particles do we want so we want 10 10 friends 10 of us are going out to find the solution and we'll do 30 iterations. Each of us are going to be like 30 iterations and trying to see, okay, which one's got the best one, okay? So that's the idea. And W equals to 0 0.5. That's the inertia weight that balances the particle's current velocity. I'm going at like super fast speed. I'm gonna add some extra inertia so I'm not at that speed, okay? So that's what that inertia value is, W. It's just a multiplication factor. That's pretty much it. Now. Two components, C1 and C2. These are the acceleration coefficients that control the influence of our movement, of the particle's movement towards the best uh, position. And C1 stands for the personal best, C2 stands for the global best. So C1 is my personal, like me, C2 is global. And we can basically, uh, I call them cognitive component and social component here. So C1, let's set it to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, play with these numbers, Again, it's the particle's tendency to move towards its best personal position. Now, what do we do with these? We are gonna use it 
pretty soon. But let's initialize the particles in velocity. So we have 10 particles, right? So we have to initialize them within the bounds, within the bounds of, our, of what we have defined. And then we have to define the velocities. So number of particles, let's go ahead and define some sort of our velocities. Okay, so we start by zeros, I believe, right there. We have three. Uh, and uh, what do we do next? Initialize the best position and three because obviously we have X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Initialize the best position and best costs. So now let's go ahead and take the particles and the best cost uh, initially. That's that we are initializing it. Now we'll find the global best. And I mean, once we go through the iterations pretty soon. And this is the positions and costs and now best global position and global best cost is what we are trying to initialize right there. Go ahead and print out after each line to see what the values look like so you understand this a bit better. So now let's get into the optimization process. So up to maximum number of iterations, how many ever? I think we said 30 or something, right? Yeah, go ahead and do this. Do what? So R1 and R2. So define a random matrix used to compute the cognitive component that's me personally. Social component is the global. Yeah, always cognitive and social is the terms that I'm using here. Cognitive is me. Social is the social component. Uh, everyone else, global best. So R1, so and R2. And once we define that, see, we are multiplying those, right? C1, remember, is our cognitive component and C2 is the social component. So you're multiplying your C1 with R1 and then you take your best positions minus the particle. So this is our cognitive component. Social component is very similar right there, except you're looking at global position and the uh, particles uh, where they are right there. And velocities, again, uh, we define the W as the weight or the inertia component and velocities are multiplied by this inertia component. And uh, again, you have to change W values or any of these values to see what effect does it have in the final result, meaning how fast is it getting there, how accurate is it. Okay, and uh, you're updating the particles and uh, you're basically you need to make sure that these are going to be within your bounds. So we're going to clip them to make sure that they are within your bounds. And uh, obviously you're evaluating the objective function. That's all it, everything comes down to because you have a solution. You have to evaluate the objective function by plugging that thing in is for each of the particles, not just your own, but all the 10 of us who are exploring this, we are going to plug the values into objective function to see who is the best. So is the best cost less than best cost. So go ahead and update the uh, positions based on what is the best. And also update the global positions, not just your own, but update the, in, not just individual, but also the global positions and go ahead and print out the values. That's, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run this and you see how fast it's going. So iteration one, the best cost is 1.6, but then the cost should go down, right? So pretty soon it actually converged right here. And what is the final values where it converged? 3.99, our solution should be four, five and minus six. There you go, four, five, and minus six. We got that almost instantaneously. So this is how uh, the, 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 the particle swarm optimization works, but there's no point in coding all this complicated stuff ourselves. I We did this so you understand exactly what this means, but normally you want to use this as a tool to solve a problem that you're after. Yeah, I hope you're not coding all the stuff that someone else already coded, <laughs> probably at a better quality than what we can do. But let's go ahead and uh, use PySwarms library in the next tutorial. Uh, after all this, I'm like, okay, don't do this and use a existing library. But I hope you appreciate what goes on inside the code when you're actually running this optimization in PySwarms or whatever library that you use. Okay, let's go ahead and meet in the next tutorial and work on a real life problem and uh, end this discussion about metaheuristic algorithms. And again, if you have any questions about these, leave in the comments, even though I may not respond to most of it, I ha keep an eye and I take a note and I make sure that I address some of these via some of these videos like this. Until then, again, Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.